Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Seftech. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Very good, very good. I'm also very fine and thank you for asking. What happened here? Is it because of you? Yeah, I honestly think it's because of the ritual because I did not plant those many bushes. So what is the plan for today? Well, our first order of business is to try and see if we can automate the production of lava. That is a giant hole and that is aluminium and that is a creeper. Yes, yes, yes. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking lush. If you want to produce lava, why are you out adventuring? Which is a very fair question. We're actually looking for one of those. Menril tree. Yes, uh, I forgot the name of the mod. So I did not put ore excavation on anything. It is perfectly fine. We just needed one sapling. We have four. So we can just go back home. The thing is, if we use a mechanical squeezer from integrated dynamics and provide it with netherrack, we will get one bucket of lava, which to me it's actually a very good deal and this is relatively cheap to make. We just needed menril. We can also be incredibly lazy and instead of using the mechanical squeezer, use the squeezer from immersive engineering, which um, I'm not sure, can we do this? Yes. I thought if we put a pipe over here, we can put one casting basin over here and one over here. The question is, now that we have provided you with some RF, if we give you one nether rack, how long will it take? Oh, it's gonna consume a lot of RF. <laughs> to be honest with you, it's not a very good solution because it consumes a lot of RF based on our standards and it takes a very long time. But it does give you one bucket. What was the point of all of that? The thing is, we are going to use advanced generators in order to generate RF. There are two ways that we can provide this guy with fuel. It's either steam or syngas. Syngas is going to require a lot of carbon, so we need a lot of bonsai pots. And by a lot, I mean like, I don't know, 30, 40 of them? But if somehow we manage to make steam using lava and water in a heat exchanger, our lives will be so much easier. The thing is, we need iron. And this is iron. Very good. And thankfully, we have vein miner. Oh, this was a huge vein. This is silicon and it can be found between Y level 24 and 48. Oh nice, we found it. We take it home. Technically speaking, we should not discriminate between ores. Whatever ore we find, we should take home. That was it. I was looking for more iron, but unfortunately I could not find another iron deposit. But I did find limonite, which seems to be nickel. And with that, we should be able to get some iron as well. And it's a huge vein. We are being very lucky today. Yes, very lucky and filthy rich. Oh, wait a minute, is that lava? Yes. Because to be honest with you, I don't mind having a little bit of obsidian. I just wanted to mention a very small point. When I was climbing up, I noticed that this part didn't get vein mined. So I'm going to vein mine this part and this. And I'm going to leave that one for your OCD. And this time, I'm not going to harvest them later on. We saw that tree on episode one and we never checked it out. Is there anything useful in it? Are there spawners? Yeah, seems to be empty. It is our lucky day. More iron. I know I said I'm not going to mine it later on, but what if we need that one piece of nickel? We'll take it. And I'll just cut it out of the video, so it should be fine. Now that again we are relatively filthy rich, let me process the ores, then I'll bring you right back. If I'm not wrong, we should have everything in order to do a proper test. I did make two additional turbines. We're gonna put them over here. I also have two advanced power capacitors. Each of them will have a capacity of 5 million RF. What else did I make? That's it actually. We also need to switch the gas turbine controller with the steam turbine controller, which goes in the center. Very good. So here's the plan. I have a barrel which has 10 buckets of lava. We're going to insert it into the heat exchanger and we are going to see how much RF are we going to generate and how long does this guy last? Oh, the steam is full. <laughs> That's instant. So it is generating us 100 RF per tick. Why? Is it because you need more steam? The thing is, I'm not exactly sure. Maybe there's a limit to the immersive engineering pipes. I remember there was a limit, but that limit could be very lower than I thought. So we are going to have extra output valves and extra input valves. And let's see if it makes any difference. So that is the problem. We need better pipes. We have access to cyclic pipes and I was hoping that would work slightly better. So if we put the extractor over here and then run the pipe, will you work any better? Yes. The rate is increasing and I guess we also have to do the same for water, right? I wasted so much lava, we have to do the test again. I need more lava. Cause the thing is, if you run out of water in your heat exchanger instead of lava, you will get obsidian. I'll be very honest, we're not doing so well. Um. I think we have to go crazy with this. So we have a slight problem. Basically, that means I have a slight problem. And that problem is 
I don't know what to do, meaning that I cannot make up my mind. Should I make it with Syngas? Should I make it with Steam? And until I make up my mind, I think the best solution is that we focus a little bit on blood magic, because we need to upgrade our altar so that we would be able to get some sigils. And I do understand, it's not in a very friendly location, but the idea is I want it to be 37 blocks away from that one so that we can have two pyramids. So it's mainly going to be an aesthetic choice. We need to link you one more time. Oh, and by the way, some of you guys were suggesting that I should use a celestial crystal instead of a rock crystal in order to power this ritual. First off, I had no idea that I can do that, so thank you very much for the tip. But the thing is, I think for this very specific ritual, we should not do that because the thing is, whenever I'm regenerating health, I cannot stab myself one more time before the soul fray is gone. And that takes like 15 seconds and I regenerate my health in like 5 seconds. So there's no point of wasting a celestial crystal for that one. I'm not sure how the progress in this mod pack is going to be, but if we need more rituals, of course I'm going to do that. We don't have that many slates, but which kind of ruins can we make? Capacity is not an option, but maybe we can do some speed ruins? Oh, we need sugar. And you should always remember that we are very poor people, and this is our altar. For the moment. Oh, and by the way, this is what I'm talking about. I have already regenerated my health, and we have 13 seconds of soul fray. I know it's called Septic Ages, but that literally took ages, and it's just 16. I put half a stack, and it took a very long time. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that if you do not know how to make the blood altar itself, all you have to do is to put a book in the altar, and you get the red book. And all you have to do is to sneak right click to select the tier, and right click on the altar, and it will show you an image on how to make it. I do understand that I just said that we're extremely poor people and we should not waste resources, but the thing is, a blood altar should be made out of blank ruins. Otherwise, it's not going to look nice. We're missing one ruin, so we will have an andesite until I make more. But with including glowstone, that is a blood altar tier 3. And the good news is we can make capacity ruins and we can store more blood in the altar. With the blood altar, we're doing very good. But I did also make a hellfire forge and we are going to need to make a few stuff. The first item that we need to craft in the hellfire forge is going to be the arcane ashes. And the recipe is not that bad. What is ash? I honestly don't understand. If you put a log, you will get ash? So how did we make charcoal? Ah, low grade charcoal, okay. A few episodes ago, we had to gather some demonic will in order to craft something. I don't remember what it was, but the important part is we have some demonic will. Arcane Ashes is not going to consume any demonic will, but we need to have a demonic will, which we had. Then we need to start making a petty tartaric gem, which I think is going to consume one demonic will? Yes. This is basically a container for demonic will, so we don't have to carry these anymore. And finally, we need to make a sentient sword. We have some books, but none of them are amazing. Maybe we should try and enchant it once and see what we will get. Fire Aspect 2. It's not bad. Also, Light Pierce 4. Increases damage against shadow mobs. Okay, it's useless. <laughs> it's okay, we have Sharpness 4 over here. We have Looting 2. And we do have an Anvil. Oh, so if you have Light Pierce, you cannot put Sharpness. Damn. Anyhow, we did all of this because in order to make the tier 4 altar, we're going to need something called Bloodstone Tile, which is going to require a Blood Shard. And the only way that we can get a Blood Shard is with a Bound Blade, which is going to require a Diamond Sword. Or a Golden Sword, okay. We're fine. But in any case, in order to craft it, we are going to need 400 demonic will. 10 of that will be consumed. What that basically means is that Lush is on the hunt. We have two Tartaric gems which are full, so we should be able to do an upgrade. The thing is, I also got a dead compass. But I didn't die. A petty tartaric gem can contain 64 demonic will. In order to have 400, I think we have to go into common tartaric gem. Ooh, it's not great, but it's not bad. For a lesser tartaric gem, guess what we need? Fermented spider eyes, which needs a mushroom. And I don't have mushrooms. I did find a dark oak forest and we found mushrooms. So we're good. After 3000 blocks of traveling, here is our first lesser tartaric gem. I was also thinking, can we make a demon crucible? No, it's okay. We can waste a little bit of demonic will. And obviously we begin our second night of hunting. Well, the second night was relatively successful. I'm wasting a lot of demonic will, but we can upgrade this one, which is a petty tartaric gem to a lesser tartaric gem. And then if I'm not wrong, we should be able to upgrade it to a common tartaric gem. We're going to need a gold block and a shadow gem. How do you make a gold block? Ew. We have one common tartaric gem and this one has a capacity of I think 400. So 
we should be good to go. And by saying we should be good to go, I mean that we have to go hunting for the third night. <laughs> Doing blood magic without any additional mods is incredibly difficult. That was a grind, but we have 1024 demonic will. I thought these are like 400, but no, it's 1000. Anyhow, let us make the binding reagent, and as usual, arcane ashes, binding reagent, and a golden sword. Yes, the bound blade. Of course, as usual, we need to go hunting, because we did all of that in order to get the blade, so that we can get the weak blood shard. For the altar itself, we just need 4 large bloodstone tiles, and we have 16, so we're fine. These 4 are extra for upgrading our tartaric gems. But now that we have a lot of demonic will, let us start making a demon crucible. Because the thing is, whenever you want to upgrade the tartaric gem to the next tier, you will lose all the demonic will which is inside. So what you can do is that you will put a demon crucible and a hellfire forge within one chunk, which I think they are? Yes. And then if you put a tartaric gem inside the demon crucible, it will release the demonic will within the chunk. And if you put a tartaric gem in the hellfire forge, you can pick it up. So in this way, we can transfer demonic will. Of course, the main reason that I wanted to get into blood magic was to get access to sigils because they are incredibly useful. So let me make a few reagents and then I'll bring you right back. I have prepared some stuff and the first sigil that we're going to make is a divination sigil. And for that, we need one blank slate. The divination sigil will tell you how much blood you have in your blood network, which is not that much. <laughs> and it will also give us some information about the altar. Then we have a water reagent, which also needs a blank slate. Slate, and this is a portable water bucket. Then we have the lava reagent with blank slate, which is a portable lava bucket. And finally, we have the growth reagent. And this one is going to need a reinforced slate. And what this guy does is that it's bone meal, but infinite. The most important sigil that I could have crafted was the air sigil, but the problem is in order to make the air reagent, you need an elite rod. So flight for the moment has to wait. One very important comment that I got from you guys was that I can enchant graphite electrodes and it seems that I should be able to get unbreaking on them. No. Okay, maybe it was possible in the previous versions. In this version, it's not possible. But I think that was a very good idea. Sadly, it didn't work. And one very important thing that we're always short on is cobalt. I have mined most of the cobalt which is next to our nether portal, so it's very difficult to find new ones. Alright guys, I do understand that magical mods get really boring really soon, so let us try and focus on a little bit of technical stuff. It's not going to be super technical, we need to automate glass. We can use the arc furnace in order to convert sand into glass, but the main problem is electrodes are expensive so we need to use the smeltery because that's the cheaper solution we just need one aqua middle gem in order to make the controller and we have one over here good of course it's not going to be anything fancy it's just going to be a method so that i don't have to use the casting basin manually myself so it's more like a quality of life improvement and i would assume one timer is enough right because it will power all of these three and thankfully we have infinite lava, so we should give you sand and sleep. I thought one clock is going to be enough, but no, you should have more. Yeah, I would assume that is not a very bad quality of life improvement because I was really tired of making glass. These hoppers are garbage. Yeah, it seems the Mark II is much better. Okay, we use that. Also in the comments of the previous episode of Ceftech, some of you guys were suggesting to me why don't I put reinforcement modifiers on the tools. Well, the thing is, I just gained two modifiers on the pickaxe. <laughs> And I only have one extra one on the hatchet. The shovel does not have any extra modifiers and if I get one, I'm going to use excavate first. I have dug a hole under our industrial area, you can see it over there. And the idea is that we're going to start generating RF. We are not going to go with steam, we're going to go with syngas because there's no way in the world I can provide it with enough lava. But there could be one way so that we can at least provide it with enough water. We are going to have an independent power source for our pumps and we're going to have 6 water pumps in total and we just fill it in with water. Our main issue is that we could not provide the syngas generator with water fast enough. So we are going to have the maximum number of intake valves, which is going to be six, and this is why we also have six pumps. And I think if we configure the pumps on extract on this side, we can just directly put the fluid intake valve right next to it. I think. The syngas controller goes in the middle and we should get some water if we add some heating chambers. So now it has water. Very good. Can we provide this guy with logs instead of coal? Yes. It's not generating any steam because it's not hot enough. It has to reach 100 degrees and we will see how fast it's going to make steam. Well, it's eating through the wood, but it's generating a decent amount of syngas. That's how fast it's eating through the coal. 
but uh, it's okay, we don't have a choice. The setup that we have down here is to generate syngas. Of course, we still have to automate the production of fuel for it, but for the moment, let us try to set up the reactor as well. We are going to need a gas intake valve, we need the turbine controller, some turbines obviously, some capacitors and there is one item which is called fuel air mixer and it will increase the efficiency to 135%. So it goes over there. Oh it's a fluid, it's not a gas, okay. But we are generating RF at a rate of 1500 per tick because we have three turbines. The question is how do we provide you with fuel? Because this is going down. I did some calculation and I do have some good news. The thing is, each turbine that you have over here with the efficiency upgrade that we have, which is 135%, is consuming 0.4 syngas per tick. Our syngas generator down here, which is now out of fuel, is going to produce us 20 millibuckets of syngas per tick. So that is going to be enough in order to power 50 turbines. 50 turbines is not something that we can achieve today, not in the next five episodes. So we can make this smaller so that it's more fuel efficient. Also, I wanted to check. You cannot give it low grade charcoal. I did some readjustments and now instead of having 5 heating chambers we are having 3 and instead of having 25 mixing chambers we only have 15. What that means is that we should be able to provide enough syngas for 30 turbines and that is going to be 15,000 RF. There is also one gas mix compressor which can increase the efficiency to 185% so we can be more fuel efficient but it's going to require a lot of ender pearl. I thought we don't have enough ender dust. We have 41. Yeah, you see, I gave it fuel and now it's generating us 15 millibuckets of syngas per tick. But now that we are actually generating 1000 RF per tick over here, can we start extracting that RF and use it in the arc furnace? Because I need to process so many items. It's almost keeping up. Nice. So everything is going to be simple. Let me set up some bonsai pots, then I'll be right back. Okay, so I did spam 18 bonsai pots with drawers and I'm using item pipes from Cyclic in order to import logs into the Syngas generator. We are having a big backlog of logs, as you can see over here, but the issue is that the moment that we start extracting RF, it literally eats through the fuel. Therefore, I'm not exactly sure what to do. An oak log gives you a carbon value of 1600. Coal and charcoal also have a carbon value of 1600, so it does not really make a difference if we provide it with logs or charcoal. The only thing that might make charcoal a better option is the fact that if you have one low-grade charcoal, you can convert it into four so you will get a better yield. But I personally think that if you take into consideration the amount of time that we need in order to convert a log into 4 charcoal, this should be a more efficient setup. Oh and by the way, I did make 3 additional turbines, so we are generating 3000 RF per tick and we have a capacity of 40 million RF because I added more capacitors. But I mean so far I can't really complain. If you guys have any solutions for generating syngas, please let me know because otherwise I just have to expand on this. Also in Astral Sorcery we have gained one additional perk and I'm going to invest it in Evorcio because we will get experience points by breaking blocks and now that we have Vein Miner and we have to mine a lot, it kind of makes sense. But just before finishing today's episode, there is one more thing that I want to try and do. I want to start with Abyssal Craft next episode and for that we are going to need an Oblivion Catalyst which is going to require Shards of the Oblivion. And if you want to make a shard of the oblivion, you're going to need a transmutation gem. The problem is, if you want to make a transmutation gem, you're going to need transformation powder from Twilight Forest. So I was hoping that we go to the Twilight Forest, try to find the powder and also an uncrafting table. The uncrafting table does have a recipe and we can craft it, but we're looking for something, we might as well find this one as well. That is the nether. If I'm not wrong, we should be able to find the transformation powder in a hollow hill. But the thing is, I also can find ores here. So we just take this home. Why not? I also found some copper and this one is Galena. Very good. Thankfully, I did bring the map and this seems to be a hollow hill. Okay, we go in. The previous one was such a garbage hollow hill. So uh, I had to find another one. And these are what we are looking for. Chests. Oh, we have two. <laughs> Five. That's actually really good. There is another chest over here, which is useless. And there is a giant one over here. This is going to be our last one because we have what we need anyways. Yeah, we take it anyways. And the fish. Twilight Wrath. I had no idea they exist. Oh, they have a spawner. Okay, we get rid of that. We have hit the jackpot. 
11. I would like to confess that hollow hills are extremely dangerous, there are so many mobs. But we have what we need, so let's go back home. Just before we wrap up for today, I wanted to make a very small clarification or explanation regarding some of the comments that I received on Valhelsia and also Seftek that we are playing now. Sometimes when I go resource gathering or adventuring or try to build something in the game, I always receive a comment that how did you manage to do it so fast? How did you get so lucky? How did you manage to find 19 transformation powder in 2 minutes? Actually I just spent 1 hour in the twilight forest trying to find the transformation powders and I visited 4 hollow hills. I also vein mined a lot of ores, so we have a lot of iron, we have nickel, we have tin, copper, lead and silver. So it's not that I'm being very lucky or I'm cheating the system or I'm being very efficient or anything, I just cut the boring parts out of the video. It took me 25 minutes to find the mushroom today, but you just saw like 10 seconds? Cause imagine, if I don't cut off the boring parts from the video, this episode would have been like 5 different episodes. As it stands, I'm already not very happy with the amount of progress that we did today. Anyhow, we have two transmutation gems. And I do not think we can make enough shards of the oblivion, because we need four in order to make the oblivion catalyst, and I think we can only make two. Yes. That's it. It is perfectly fine because I'm charging up our Necronomicon over there and sooner or later there will be shadow creatures. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one, bye bye.